Good day, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. This weekend, Pope Francis travels to Fatima, Portugal, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of a mysterious apparition that appeared there to three children. Three village children, the children believe the apparition to be the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. For decades, the enigmatic third secret of Fatima has captured the imagination of millions worldwide. But now, in a momentous revelation, Pope Francis himself has stepped forward to unveil the long-awaited truth behind this elusive prophecy. But what exactly does the Pope have to reveal? What profound insights does the third secret of Fatima hold that compel the Church to keep it under wraps for so long? And, importantly, could the revelations within the third secret offer guidance or warnings for humanity's future? Make sure you stick with us until the end as we delve into the heart of one of history's most elusive mysteries and unlock the secrets that have eluded us for so long. Let's begin. The third prophecy of Fatima stands as one of the most intriguing predictions linked to the Catholic Church. For decades, speculation has swirled around the contents of the third prophecy, fueling curiosity and debate among believers and skeptics alike. But what mysteries lie within its words? The three secrets of Fatima are a remarkable series of visions and prophecies shared by three young Portuguese shepherds, Lucia Santos, along with her cousins, Jacinta and Francisco Marto. Back in 1917, these children claimed to have encountered the Virgin Mary on six separate occasions between May and October of that year, an event known as the Apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima. But on July 13, 1917, around noon, something extraordinary unfolded. The Virgin Mary, in her divine wisdom, entrusted the children with three secrets. However, these secrets remained shrouded in mystery until 1941. It was only then, almost 24 years later, that two of these secrets were revealed through a document written by Lucia, fulfilling the request of Bishop José Álvez Correa de Silva. The third secret of Fatima, cloaked in mystery, took years to come to light. In 1943, the bishop urged Lucia, one of the children who witnessed the apparitions, to reveal it. However, Lucia hesitated, unsure if she had received a clear directive from God. Eventually, under the bishop's insistence, she wrote down the secret in October 1943, sealing it in an envelope with strict instructions not to open it until 1960. It was believed that by then, its meaning would be clearer. It wasn't until the year 2000 that Pope John Paul II finally revealed the content of the secret to the world. Despite some skepticism about whether the entire secret was disclosed, the Vatican maintains the authenticity of the revelation. So what exactly do these secrets entail? According to Catholic interpretation, they involve profound matters such as hell, the tumultuous events of World War I, and persecutions faced by Christians in the 20th century. Exploring the broader context of Marian apparitions, it's noteworthy that only a small fraction of the hundreds investigated by the Catholic Church have received official approval. Surprisingly, nine out of the twelve approved occurrences took place between 1830 and 1933. The limited number of acknowledged events prompt contemplation on their significance. Cultural anthropologists Victor and Edith Turner, who embraced Catholicism in 1958, once saw the surge of Marian apparition cults as a reaction from the disenfranchised lower middle class grappling with the swift changes of her post-industrial culture. Now let's delve deeper into the life of Lucia Santos, one of the central figures in the revelations of Fatima. And here's where things get really strange. In 1928, at the tender age of 14, she was sent to the Sisters of St. Dorothy School in Villar, near Porto. Later, she became a nun at the convent in Tue, just across the Spanish border. Remarkably, throughout her life, Lucia continued to experience private visions sporadically. In the 1930s, the Bishop of Lyria urged Lucia, who took on the religious name Sister Maria Lucia of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart, to write about her experiences. This effort aimed to uncover more details about her cousins and the apparitions they witnessed in 1917. Interestingly, the concept of a secret being entrusted to the children during the apparitions emerged as early as July 1917. 
Lucia hinted that the during the mid-1940s, Sister Lucia fell seriously ill while living with her fellow sisters in Tue, Spain. Fearing that she might pass away before she could reveal the remaining part of the secret, the Bishop of Lyria urgently requested her to write it down. In obedience and amidst the agony of her illness, Sister Lucia painstakingly transcribed the third secret into a single sheet of paper. She sealed it within an envelope, emphasizing the gravity of its contents. But before we explore Sister Lucia's testimony further, it's important to consider the words of then-Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. And you might want to pay close attention to this next part. In his theological commentary, The Message of Fatima, Cardinal Ratzinger acknowledges the speculation and controversy that surrounded the third secret for many years. He noted that the content of the long-guarded envelope might not meet everyone's expectations. Examining the revelations of Fatima prompts us to wonder about the intentions behind a communication from the Mother of Our Lord to Christianity and humanity during a time of great turmoil. But do these lessons apply to the problems we face today, or are they simply insights into the minds of children who grew up in an intensely religious environment, influenced by the people of their time? And in what sense is this vision significant, and how should we interpret it? Well, let's now zoom into what happened, in what the three young shepherds witnessed at Fatima, Portugal, in 1917. And this is where the story takes a truly shocking turn. In obedience to God's command through the Bishop of Lyria and the Virgin Mary, Lucia recounted the vision she and her cousins witnessed. She described seeing an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand, emitting flames that seemed poised to engulf the world. However, these flames were extinguished upon encountering the radiant splendor emanating from Our Lady's right hand. The angel, pointing towards the earth with his right hand, cried out, Then, Lucia described a scene where bishops, priests, men, and women religious ascended a steep mountain culminating in a large cross made of rough-hewn trunks resembling cork trees. But before reaching the sacred peak, the vision took a harrowing detour. The Holy Father, representing the Pope, traversed a city in ruins, beset by destruction and trembling with fear. His journey was marked by pain and sorrow as he prayed for the souls of the deceased scattered along his path. Upon reaching the summit of the mountain, he knelt before the big cross. However, his solemn moment was abruptly interrupted by a group of soldiers who mercilessly attacked him, unleashing a hail of bullets and arrows. Tragically, the Pope was martyred, symbolizing a profound sacrifice for his faith. But the tragedy didn't end there. In a chilling cascade of violence, bishops, priests, men, and women religious, as well as people from various walks of life, met similar fates, falling victim to the same brutal onslaught. Below the arms of the cross did two angels, each holding a crystal aspersorium, a vessel used for sprinkling holy water. They collected the blood of the martyrs and sprinkled it upon the souls ascending to God, symbolizing purification and sanctification through sacrifice. This vision, while haunting in its imagery, carries profound spiritual significance. It serves as a call to repentance and penance, urging humanity to turn away from sin and embrace a path of righteousness. The flaming sword symbolizes divine justice, while Our Lady's radiant splendor signifies divine mercy, offering hope amidst impending catastrophe. The call for penance underscores the urgency of spiritual renewal and conversion. The depiction of the Pope's martyrdom underscores the theme of sacrifice for the greater good, a timeless message resonating throughout Christian tradition. Moreover, the vision's portrayal of widespread suffering and persecution speaks to the enduring struggle between good and evil, light and darkness. It challenges believers to remain steadfast in their faith even in the face of adversity and persecution. Yet amidst this darkness, the angels collecting the blood of the martyrs offer a glimpse of hope and redemption. Their action symbolizes the sanctifying power of suffering and the triumph of faith over adversity. In essence, the third secret of Fatima serves as a powerful reminder of humanity's need for repentance, conversion, and reliance on God's mercy. It urges us to heed the call to penance, to embrace the cross, and to persevere in faith even in the face of persecution and hardship. However, 
one can only imagine the profound impact these prophetic secrets had on the three young visionaries at Fatima. The words and visions they received from God and the Blessed Mother were not just confined to that moment but hold significance for all of us today. Nearly four decades later, in May 1982, Sister Lucia shared her interpretation of the third secret in a letter to Pope John Paul II. She revealed that it spoke of a symbolic warning, if the world did not heed the requests outlined in the secret, Russia's errors would spread, leading to wars, persecutions of the Church, and suffering for the Holy Father. However, if these requests were followed, Russia would convert, and peace would prevail. Finally, after years of anticipation, the long-awaited revelation of the third secret of Fatima has come to light. The Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith underscores that Pope John Paul II's decision to make this secret public marks the end of a turbulent era, marred by human greed and wickedness for power and evil. Yet it also signifies a period filled with God's merciful love and the vigilant care of the Mother of Jesus and the Church. The narrative of Fatima highlights two key elements shaping human history, God's actions as the Lord of history and humanity's co-responsibility in shaping its destiny through creative freedom. Our Lady, who graced Fatima with her apparitions, brings attention to these forgotten values, reminding us that the future of humanity rests in God. She emphasizes that we're not passive observers but active, responsible partners in creating our shared future. The third secret, safeguarded until 1960, marked a pivotal moment in church history. Sister Lucia, entrusted with the secret, faced resistance in revealing it but ensured its placement in the secret archives of the Holy Office. Controversy surrounding the public revelation in 2000 led to doubts about its authenticity and conspiracy theories. However, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith affirmed the revealed text's authenticity, and Sister Lucia confirmed that everything had been disclosed. Dispelling notions of hidden revelations, before her passing in 2005, Sister Lucia ensured that Mary's words and messages were shared with the world at the appropriate time. The consecration of the world, including Russia, to Mary's Immaculate Heart, fulfilled the Blessed Mother's wishes, resolving much of the controversy surrounding the third secret.